Our next guest here on Football America is none other than Juan Carlos Osorio, a man who has managed up and down the Americas, although you probably know him best from his time with the Mexican national team at and leading up to the 2018 World Cup. El Profe joins us here on the show. Juan Carlos, great to have you with us. Well, uh, thank you very much for the uh, invitation. And before we started, I would like to ask uh, all the people involved, including the, the those who are watching the the program, just to be a little bit patient with me. Perfect. Well, listen, if anyone knows about patience, it's me. I work with Hercules Gomez <laughs> on a, on a semi daily basis. Y cualquier right, cosa aquí right. la, la podemos traducir de español a inglés. Right, so, right, right. Um, right. so listen, since you left the Mexican national team, you've been kind of off the radar for a lot of our audience. Um, you, you spent a lot of the last few years in Colombia. It's a football that we don't see a lot of. I wonder kind of what your experience was like there and how does Colombian football in that league compare to the other stops on your career? Very interesting question. Um, I decided myself to to stay in Colombia because my parents, both of my parents are alive, close to 90 years old, and I wanted to be near them. And also, my oldest son uh, is in sixth semester of medical school, and I want to be near him. Juan Carlos, you know, you've been to a lot of different places. Some of those stops, one of those stops, I should say, was uh, Major League Soccer, Chicago, 2007. I'm curious what your experience was like back then in 2007 in Major League Soccer and maybe some of the changes you've seen from afar now that you've gotten a step away from Major League Soccer. Right. Um, I am obviously mm, biased about my opinion of the MLS because um, I am a very thankful to United States because that's when I went to school on a scholarship and I play, work and initiated my, my professional career. But I have always said that if there is one league that is a model to, for everybody else is the MLS because obviously with some with with things to improve is probably the, the the league in the world that has more that has progressed the most because the 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 top salary cap because the ideas of trying to always compete at the same level and that's something that is very very difficult to find I think it's only in the United States where, and, and, and probably following other sports like basketball and American football, the rules are to try to play at the same level. That doesn't happen in, in South America. Here, uh, everybody, the, the richest club buys the best players and the, 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 the clubs that they don't have the resources Obviously, they don't have access to those top players, so the competition is never on the same level. Whereas in America, it's always the same level. And I think if you uh, get that um, in place, then the tactical plays, the tactical part of the game, can can make you either be successful or not su successful but not because you have the advantage of having a better better squad and if we translate that into international football that's what uh, that's why some clubs like uh, Real Madrid take a big chance in, in bringing big big time players and trying to uh, get at the same level of competition with other with other teams in America, it's very difficult. In, in, it's very different. United States is it, it, is very equal to everybody, and that's probably the the thing that I admire the most, and probably the thing that I criticize the most in, in South American football. That is not that um, even level of competition. Mm. 
Uh, one of the players that you got to work with while you were in Major League Soccer, I know it was a while ago, but I doubt you forget working with a guy like Cuauhtémoc Blanco. Is he the best Mexican player you ever coached? <laughs> Cuauhtémoc Cuauhtémo was something else. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I would say that when, he, when, he, when, when we coincide at Chica in Chicago, uh, the thing that amazed me the most was that even though he couldn't speak the language, he will just not lose the ball. He will protect the ball like, like we say it in South America, is is like a, a loving girlfriend. You you <laughs> you never expose them. You keep it for yourself, and 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 you don't uh, you do everything to to protect her. And, and that's what Cuauhtémoc did. And he did the, the Cuauhtémilla and, and all the things that he did just to protect the ball. And he, did, he couldn't uh, communicate himself, but his, comp his competitiveness was there to be, to, be a, to be shown and to be admired for the rest. So as long as he's, he gives us his 100%, then he, uh, he will be fine. As far as being the best the best Mexican player that I ever coached. Mm, well, I would say that there are very, there are three that I put on the same category. Uh, Rafael Marquez, you know, he won everything with, yeah. with Barcelona and he was a big influence in, in the squad, he, even in the World Cup 18 in Russia, when he has to play against Brazil. The other two players was, were uh, Hector Herrera, and Andres Guardado, mm. two central midfielders, box to box, number eight in many in many in many <laughs> football cultures. Number eight, no number six, no number ten, but number eight, box to box, and being able to play football, to keep the ball and go forward, and also try to defend themselves when it, when it was needed. So I would say that those probably those four players were the the Mex Mexican players that I ever coach. Wow, mm. you know that's interesting because a lot of people would say just based off talent alone, Carlos Vela would kind of sweep everybody on that list. Oh, Carlitos, yes, yes. Oh, okay. Sorry, <laughs> I have to. I have to. Right. Sorry, sorry. I apologize. No, no problem. As far as, as far as talented, oh, Carlos was mm. the, the the best player ever. There, there is a study in. Um, Carla 12 in the St at Stanford University, where where she uh, talks about the um, the um, personality of the of the athletes, and they say fija, which is almost like fixed versus progressive, and the fixed uh, uh, type of personality are those who can play with and only talented with talent. And that was Carlos Vela. Yeah. Mm. Very, very, very talented players. If he could have uh, add to his game more uh, commitment, more discipline, and more uh, like extra work going to the gym, I think Carlos could have the could 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 have the potential to be one of the best players in the in his position. Hmm. And you've coached a, a lot of good players in the Mexican national team. And it leads me to ask the question of why exactly you left the Mexican national team after the World Cup. But did you want to stay? Was it offered? What happened there, Juan Carlos? Hercules, very interesting question. And I agree to, to come to your program and speak the truth. I think that that was my biggest mistake. Um... When we were in the World Cup, I was approached by Colombian executives, mm. by Colombian officials, and they promised me that I was going to be the, the, the next Colombian national team manager. And obviously, I am very proud to be Colombian. There are two nations that I really, well, three now, that I really I am very helpful. A, my own country, Colombia, B, United States because where that's where I where that's where I went to university that's where I start working and producing money and consolidating myself as a professional 
and see Mexico for giving me the opportunity to go to the World Cup. But when we beat Germany and we, uh, as you probably know, we took Brazil on the uh, quarter of the World Cup. We, we took them to the 68 minute, almost 70 minute. Uh, then the Mexicans uh, changed their, their point of view and they want me to stay. But it was my decision to quit because I believe in the Colombian Federation. And it turned out to be another case because then they decide on, on another coach for another circumstances. So I think, uh, Hercules, that was a big mistake on my part to leave mm. Mexico where I was having, uh, I think, a, a, a very good car football career. And I think with another four year uh, cycle, I could, I could have done better things. Was that on the mm. table, Juan Carlos? That four year cycle, was that offered to you by the Mexican uh, FMF? Yes. Uh, a lot of people don't 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 know that, but after beating Germany and playing against Brazil, the Mexican Federation offered me the next four years, and and I was very naive, uh, and I believe in the Colombians' executives and the Colombians' bosses, and at the end they 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 play that play against my 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 career. Mm. It sounds like you have some regret, Juan Carlos, about the decision in the time. Would you ever consider in a future coming back to Mexico in the national team? Well, as I just said, um, I, I, uh, I, I believe that uh, any human being uh, is thankful with those who, who, who has helped him to become what he is. And in that regard, I was born in Colombia, so obviously uh, I love my country. My parents are still alive, as I said. I live here, but I am very thankful to the United States. And that's a country that I know I, someday I will come back to work and to compete and, and hopefully to, to uh, uh, give my, my input whatever input I can, I can make because it's a, it's a country that I feel very thankful to. And Mexico, because they give me the chance to go to the World Cup, which is probably the best scenario for any, any coach in the world. Mm. You know, Juan Carlos, there are very few people who know this Mexican national team and their superstars like you. You know this pool uh, inside and out. So I have to ask you about one of the most polemic figures right now, craziness that he's a polemic figure right now is Javier Hernandez, Chicharito Hernandez, and everything that's going on with Javier Hernandez and him not being part of this national team setup. Um, you, as somebody who was his coach and knows what he's like, not seeing him part of this setup, what are your thoughts? Well, I will start by saying that um, Javier has the knack, as they say in England, the knack for for, for the goal, he, he will score some wonderful goals, but he will also score the, the usual uh, number nine goals. Um, <clears throat> Raul is a different type of player. And when I have the, uh, the, them two, I try to um, provide with the... Um, an opportunity for both of them to to be in the team or at some point play together because I think when you have uh, two players in the same position that are very influential in the game you have to look in a structure in a system that you can play them together but that was not the case at in that particular time for me so uh, Javier was always a a figure that can uh, bring along all the rest of the players, where Raul was, were more distant. Now, I think with, with time, 
Uh, Raúl has improved great deal, as is, as I expected, uh, playing for Wolves, and I think that's probably the 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 the, the, um, the most um, opposition that 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 Javier can can have because now there uh, there are other strikers that are improving. And that are reaching that point where the uh, the the difference is is minimum, and the fact that that Javier is not there is a, is a question that I always ask to myself: What could have happened to him? Because I always thought that he would be there for the next World Cup as well. Juan Carlos, you got to explain to me what it is that you do on set pieces. Because as we compare <laughs> kind of your Mexico to the present Mexico, one of the things that I can't help but notice is that every time there's a corner kick or anything, the Mexico fans that I watch games with, they start biting their nails. They get very, very nervous. Yeah. It wasn't that way when you were the manager. What were you able to do? Well, I will put you in a con. <laughs> And, um, and I asked Marcelo, uh, why don't you give me a chance to work with you? And he said, he asked me, he said to me, uh, you know what the, the, uh, the rules are made for? And I say, well, the rules are made to, to be followed. And he said, no, not <laughs> in your case, not in your case. You will, you will argue all those rules. We will argue those, those facts. And, and he said to me, for instance, I will never defend the set pieces like you do. And I did say to him, with all the respect, I will never defend the set pieces like you do, Neil. <laughs> because, uh, and, and my point of view is this, if you have, uh, if you have wingers like uh, Irving Lozano, uh, mm, Carlos Vela, uh, Andres Guardado, that uh, they are no, they are probably five, five foot four, or five three. I don't know. I'm five. I think I'm five eight. I think, and they were uh, smaller than me. Then I, I would say, well, they will not help us defending. So I might as well just leave them farther up the pitch, and that will fix. It, it, correct me if I'm wrong. That's the that's the um, that's the word that the Spanish people use. Fixed. So with the three, with uh, with er Irving Lozano, uh, Andres Guardado, and Carlos Vela, and sometimes uh, and sometimes um, uh, Dos Santos, no Giovanni, the other one, Jonah, or jo or Johan, or, the, or, or, or even Giovanni. So I will leave three as far as far as I could and one 50-50 and the opposition will always, always leave one, one B1. So let's say if I leave three and a half or three, four, so they leave the four. Now they have the kicker, that's fifth. That means that they have five players in the big, in the area. And by numerical, just by numerical reasons, we have seven players, right? right. So I always thought if you have a, a, a three or four guys that are very good in the air, very competitive in the air, most, most teams in the world have four, five, the most, five, the most uh, offensive demand, uh, determine intelligent players in the in, in, in the box. Let's take the example of, 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 of Liverpool. They will have Van Dijk, Fabinho, uh, the other, uh, what's the other, the, 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 the guy from, from Africa, the other Matip, center back. The other center back, Matip, Matip, John Matip. Matip. Thank you very much, Matip. But Robertson is not... In, Arnold, well, you saw the game, they, they, they scored again, the game against Villarreal when they scored the, same, the, the second goal because he cannot defend a, a long diagonal ball to the second post. 
So we have Liverpool with maybe three influential players in determined players in the air. Maybe let's add um, Firmino. That's four. Manchester City, you tell me. Maybe Porta, Laporte, uh, Jones, or uh, Stoke. Uh, um, John Stone, see, see. Yeah, yeah. See, see, it's very, very, very few people, very few teams that have more than four or five players good in the air. Mm. So if you can match them up with your best four or five players in the air, then the rest yeah. shouldn't be in the, in, the, in the area because that avoids and that prevents from the goalkeeper to come out yeah. and get the ball. And it'll, it'll topple that. As United States, you have a very good goalkeepers that are very good in the air, then you have two extra men in the box, so you don't need more people. That's what I think. Yeah, it's a, it's a good way. I, I, no, 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 no. Hold on one second. This is good for you. I remember playing against United States, a, a very difficult game in, in Mexico. And you remember last elimination the World Cup. That score... Remember that Javier Hernandez, Chicharito tried to play, tried to come deep and play the ball, play first touch, and Bradley just hit the ball and he went over over Ochoa. Remember that. Mm -hmm. And you also remember how how Mexico tied the game. It was a corner kick, and exactly that situation. They played the ball. We get it. Played into Vela. Counter attack. And we hit it in yeah, the counter attack. But the, Juan the Carlos, that's because no, that's because Demarcus Beasley's Puebla coach didn't tell him that Carlos Vela <laughs> goes inside to his left foot. Uh -huh. <laughs> well done, well done, well done. Uh, I have well to, I have to and ask. No, and, 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 and to and to add to that, the only team that scored against us was uh, Sweden. Yeah. Uh, in that game that we almost lost the chance to. To continue in the World Cup, but that, that's football. That's what but I want to ask one, you about, Juan Carlos. That was once, right? That was once. I want to ask you about the World Cup. Uh, I assume you saw the World Cup draw for Mexico. Some would say it's a scary draw. You have Messi, Argentina, you've got Lewandowski, Poland, and you got Saudi Arabia there. I'm curious as to your, your reaction of the draw for Mexico. Well, against Argentina, it would be uh, a very difficult match, I think. There's no secret. Scaloni has done a great work, and and Argentina is one of the best, the best national teams uh, in 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 present times. Uh, Poland, it will be a very uh, direct football. Lewandowski is, as we know, one of the best uh, uh, strikers in the world. And Saudi Arabia, I think it will be a very difficult game. Why? Because they are fast, they are quick. And um, I remember going to watch previous to the world, to the 18, to the night, uh, to the Russian World Cup, uh, Germany against Saudi Arabia. And they had a chance to score a couple goals because they are very good in the, in the transitions from defense to offense. So I think it's a very difficult group. And I think that will compete well, and I wish them the best, but it's very difficult, and it will prove the, uh, the actual level of uh, Mexican football. Hmm. All right, Juan Carlos. Did I answer, uh, did I answer that question, Hercules? Yes, yeah. you did. Yeah. yeah, I think it's a very realistic way of answering the question, yeah. Yeah. Uh, before we let you go, Juan Carlos, what's, what's next for you? Uh, obviously, I know you want to get back to work. Uh, do you have any offers from MLS, Liga Mekis? Are we going to be covering Juan Carlos Osorio soon here on Football Americas? Very um, interesting question. I think that um, in, in, at, at the present time, and surprisingly enough, um, there are a tendency to follow what is the uh, the trend, and the trend is to play uh, prolonged, long sequences of passes like Manchester City or in 2010 
Barcelona or Bayern Munich, like in general, what Guardiola has has led, and a lot of people try to play that way. So now a lot of teams try to play from the back, and a lot a lot of a lot of teams try to pressure, high pressure, and it surprised me that there are no many teams that has developed a patterns of playing high up the pitch. For instance, if you're playing 4-3-3 against a 4-4-2, then in my in my own idea, if we only have one striker, that striker has to take make a decision who is going to pressure, what center back. And the uh, the interior player on 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 the opposite side will take the the, the other uh, center back and the one thing that surprised me the most is that most teams now leave the goalkeeper alone and the goalkeeper has taken a big importance in playing from the back henderson i mean anderson anderson and all the brazilian that you and if that's the case, you have to develop patterns of high pressure where you leave two players open on the other team. Because obviously, when I'm going to play against that team, it's 10 versus 11 when the other team has the ball, including the goalkeeper. And you have to take chances. So what's my next, uh, what's my next uh, objective? Is to uh, take a team that are very athletically prepared to do that high pressure and or in a perfect world a team that can also play long consecutive passes 10 12 15 passes so when you lose when you eventually lose the ball you are close enough to all the players and you try to regain and you actually regain the ball higher up the pitch so i am looking uh, i like african nations i like the countries like canada jamaica united states mm. uh, and couple in south america i i can tell you where <laughs> where you can where you can mix them up uh, those those players that have a uh, muscular fiber type 2v explosive and also type 1a more ox they call oxidative that can go back and forth because i want to be in one project where i can play high pressure higher up the pitch and really play the way i feel football should be played mm. all right they call him el profe i think they should call him el doctor after that scientific yeah. explanation <laughs> we got there juan carlos osorio <laughs> thank you so much for the time and great to have you with us here on the show we hope to have you again soon if anybody there watching from Southern Connecticut State, where that's the physiological part, that's where I learned from. Uh -huh. And I try to add it to football. That's why I'm so thankful to the United States because it gives me the chance to reach my goals and work and study and practice and start my professional career. Mm -hmm. So I wish you all the best. I think you're going to have a great World Cup and hopefully one day, We'll be there to I imagine. talk about football and debate about football. <laughs> uh -huh. I imagine we will cross paths again soon. Thanks again, Profe. Appreciate you. Gracias, Profe. Thank you very much. All the best. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye.